Hello, today we will be learning how to detect collisions on the character body 2D, the area 2D, and the rigid body 2D nodes. Now let's get started. Alright, first let's take a look at the character body 2D collisions. As you can see, I've got a character body 2D here with a collision shape and a sprite 2D just to make it appear. And then I've got a character controller script right here that I've got on the node. All right, as you can see, I've just got a very basic character controller here. Um, it's all very simple stuff. If you want to know more about how it's made, you can just go watch our Godot 4 platformer movement C-sharp video, and that'll explain everything on how this is made. I'll put a link to that in the description. So to detect collisions with the character uh, body 2D, we just got to go 4, and then we will type... This all has to be after the move and slide, by the way. Um, Four, and then we'll get slide collision count. And so this will just loop through all the collisions that our character body is detecting right now. And then we can go gd.print. And then we will go get slide collisions i. And then we'll type get glider dot get flat. Class. And that'll just give us the class name of whatever we're colliding with so that we know exactly what we are hitting. So let's go back to Godot and hit play. Now, as you can see, it's spamming the uh, console with tile map because that's what we're colliding with right now. So I'm jumping, the number stops going up here. And then when I land, it starts going up again. Okay, now I'm just going to close this. Okay, now let's make an area for our character to collide with. So we'll go Control A and then search for Area 2D, and then we'll press Control A again and then search for Collision Shape 2D, and then we will just give this a sprite as well. So Control A again and Sprite 2D, and so we'll give this a collision shape of rectangle. Let's zoom in here. And then I will give this a uh, sprite of the area 2D. So I'll click on this, give it the sprite of the area 2D. Now I'll make the collision shape same size as the sprite. Then I will move this down over here. And so we'll try and jump into this and see if the character can collide with the area. Okay, as you can see, we're colliding with the tile map, and I jump, and we aren't colliding with the area, but we can pass right through it, so that's perfect. So the areas are just er areas that you can pass through and detect collisions, but our character isn't de detecting the collisions on it right now. Okay, in order to fix that, we'll go to our area 2D. We'll give it a script. I've already made a script here, but it doesn't have anything in it. It's just stock standard default. And then uh, we will go to this node tab up here, and we'll go to the body entered. We'll go connect. We'll click on the area 2D. We'll change this to, we'll type on body entered. We'll click connect. And then we'll make a function down here called public void on body entered. Then we'll have a node 2D passed in, and we'll call this body. This will get triggered every time we're uh, collided with anything. So if we want to specifically send some data to the uh, character controller that we collided with, we can go if, and then we'll do body dot has method, and then we'll make a method on the character controller called hit. And so if we don't have this, we'll just return. Now we'll go body.call and then we'll call the method hit here and we'll pass in this as the data that we want to send to the body or the character controller. Now we'll go up here and make the method. So we'll go down here and go public void hit node 2D. We'll call this body again. And then we can go gd.print body.get glass. 
and that'll give us the class of the body that it or the area that we're hitting. Okay, I'm just going to come out, out this line so it's not spamming the console, and we'll go and test this. So we'll go over, hit play, move this up so we can see the console. And then, as you can see, every time we jump into it, it says Area 2D. So the player is detecting now that it's hitting the Area 2D. And now I'm going to go close this, and we're going to start on the Rigid Body 2D. The Rigid Body 2D is a little bit different. There's a few other things that we're going to have to pay attention to, so I'm going to go ahead and create a Rigid Body 2D. And once again, I'm going to give it a shape. And then I'm going to give that a um, sprite as well. So the collision shape I'm going to give this is a circle. Then I'm going to zoom in and give it the sprite rigid body 2D. And I'm going to make the circle uh, bigger to match the size. All right, so first things first is uh, we have to turn on contact monitoring. It's off by default on rigid bodies. And then we'll have this max contacts reported. So this is the number of contact things it's colliding with that it can report on. So currently it's zero, so it can't report on anything colliding with it. So if we just ramp it up to like five, it can report five different things colliding with it at a time. So we'll put that there and then I'll move it down over to here so it will fall on the player then we'll go over to node again and give it the body entered oh wait first i am going to give it the script rigidbodycollision.cs now i'm going to go to the node go body entered connect i'm going to click on the rigid body again and then go on body entered and click connect Okay, now let's go make the function. It's fairly similar to the last time, but there's a few minor differences. So we'll go public, void, and then we'll go on body entered. And then instead of a node 2D, it's just a node this time, and we'll call it body as well. Now, um, I'm gonna show you a different way of getting the collision or getting the character, which is a lot more specific than just looking for the method that the uh, character has on it called hit. All right, we can go if body dot get class is equal to character body 2D. So this will be the name of the node type, not the name of the node itself. So if you rename the node, this is going to stay the same. So if it equals that, then we can go character controller. And then we'll just call this character controller is equal to body as character controller. And so this will try and cast body into the character controller type. So then we can go if character controller equals null, we'll just return. Then we can go character controller dot hit and see it notices that there's the hit function then we'll just say this that way we can hover this and it'll tell us what the function wants from us and we can be a little more specific than if we did the area collision like this way all right let's go and test and see if this works so let's run it and move this up and as you can see we got the rigid body 2d but if we uh, move this rigid body over and run it again, we'll walk into the rigid body and nothing happens. So the way it works is the rigid body can only detect collisions with the character or us. Uh, yeah, the character body 2D. If the rigid body is the one that initiates the collision itself. If the character body just initiates the collision, the rigid body won't notice it. So let's go back and try and detect that collision with the character body. So we'll go over here and just uncomment this line and then go back to Godot, run it again. And as you can see, we now have the rigid body. Okay, now let's close this. 
All right, the last kind of collision detection we're going to look at is static bodies. So we'll go static body 2D, and then once again, we'll give it a shape. And then we will give it a sprite as well. So we'll give the uh, collision shape a rectangle again. And then we will give the sprite a texture of the static body. Go to this and increase the collision shape to correct size. Then we'll move this down over here. And as you'll notice when we look over here, it doesn't have any signals like the rigid body or the area do. So all the, your collision detection has to be with a character body, an area, or rigid body. So this one's pretty straightforward. We'll just run it and then when the character jumps into it, it'll say static body. All right, that's all we've got. And I'll just throw up a little chart to explain the like more uh, intricate details of how all these objects work together and collide with each other. So hopefully that'll clear some things up. All right, so I've got this chart here. So these are the nodes that you are trying to do the collision detection on. And these are the nodes that they are colliding with. So as you can see, like the character body 2D can collide with character body 2Ds, but it can't collide with area 2Ds, whereas the area 2Ds can collide with the area 2Ds as well. You can see here the main uh, exception is the rigid body 2D can collide with the character body 2D, but only as long as it's the one that initiates the collision. So hopefully, uh, looking at this chart, you can see how all the collisions work. The static body 2D and the tile map don't have any signals themselves, so they don't have anything in here, but other things can collide with them. All right, so that's all I've got for today. Um, thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. And if you liked this video, please give it a like. And if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel, please give us a subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.